So Jeff, I would love to talk about uh, the Jerusalem Festival of Light, which you organized and kept going with Leah, your beautiful wife, for many, many years, 13 years, I understand. So, um, of course, it was very much in alignment with this idea of spiritual healing and healing the earth. It was, um, of course, following that idea, would it be said? Well, Jerusalem Celebration of Light started with a group of friends, and I think you were one of them, where we recognized that we needed to send out a burst of light from Jerusalem, and we wanted to invite many friends together. So we found, a, so I found a place in the Jerusalem forest um, behind Yad Vashem, which is the Holocaust Memorial. Yes. And, and, and it's in the forest on a beautiful mountaintop, um, hilltop, and. Um, we, we gathered there, um, we gathered, as you said, 13 times, and we had... 13 years, years, is that right? 13 it's years? actually 12 years. 12 years. Times. One year there was tw twice. Okay. And um, we had between uh, like 400 to 2,000 people each year. Um, it was free of charge. We just passed the hat around to cover expenses. Um, we would do large energy for peace circles where I would teach people to feel energy in their hands and then we would connect together, and then we would have, and we would do many of these circles during the, the uh, uh, two days that we were together, and uh, we would always be sending out a blessing of light, and we would, to different places. We would have um, workshops that took place, different people would offer workshops. I think you, you, you were there several times, and maybe you offered a workshop there, I'm not sure. And no, um, I don't think so. The idea came up, but it never came to fruition. And um, we planted uh, a peace pole one year. We had um, uh, friends like Jimmy Twyman came, and, and the Green Sheikh came, and um, someone from uh, Japan, I forgot his name, and uh, we came and we planted a, a peace pole that says, May peace prevail on earth in four languages. Um, we we constantly had different activities going on. Each year there was like a peace ceremony that would take place as well. And um, people would leave there in this elated state. Yes. And many, and many people would come and they would just feel the healing vibration from all from the people around. Um, you had to climb up to the top of the hill. You, we had special permission so we could bring your wheelchair in, but still it was difficult for you to get to this nature place. And um, the Jerusalem Celebration of Light was an amazing experience, and uh, I was the leader of it, uh, and, and uh, more the, the guide of it. And, uh, like we would have, sometimes we'd have it 12 o'clock at night in meditations, and we would do it on the full moon. And this mountain, when you go to on the full moon, the moon reflects off the rocks, the beautiful flat rocks, and reflects off of it. It's an amazing light that comes out. Very, it's, it's, it's a very mystical place in general, but became even more so. On top of the hill, there's a what I call the male vortex and the female vortex. And the female vortex is actually round, natural stones that are present that um, uh, you can sit around in, and uh, it's, it's, it's one of the main circles we would use. And you really could feel the feminine energy there. Wow. wow. It, I remember it. Uh, it was amazing uh, experience of, of joy, really. Um, and I know people met there, met their mates, their hus their husbands or their wives, and it was a very very important part of people's lives. And I remember some uh, Tibetan uh, uh, Rinpoches showed up one year. Is that right? Right. Yes, we had. Uh we would have different people come and show up we didn't know about, and uh, we had uh, three or four uh, Tibetan monks came, and they like uh, out of the blue from nowhere. And then we rearranged our schedule and gave them a workshop time, and then they came and helped us with some of the circles. We would always have fires around, and usually people would bring food to share. And some years, uh, people would uh, volunteer to make collective meals. And then we would share, give food to each person that was there. Um, 
and uh, people would camp overnight. And this is all uh, within like a, uh, like a 15 minute drive from downtown Jerusalem. Uh, and, and yet we're in the midst of nature in a whole, uh, in a whole beautiful spot under the moonlight. And, uh, it was just an awesome, awesome experience. Yeah. So, um, so I'm sure, you know, it, it, it brought great healing. Jerusalem is so key. Jerusalem is a great radiator. What happens here, according to many sources, uh, Cryon talks about this a lot, but also many others. Um, we even see it, 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 we even know it intuiti intuitively. What happens in Jerusalem reaches the whole world in a big way, and we see it on the news. So, um, unfortunately, unfortunately, we didn't see the uh, Festival of Lights on the news, but no doubt about it, it had a big impact on the world. Well, wouldn't you agree? I know you would. Well, I obviously I would agree, but uh, I, I, we did get on the news once or twice, but uh, not in the Israeli news uh, from Europe. The European stations would come. Okay. And um, it did more than that. It wasn't just that it brought out light and a burst of light, which is really what, uh, what our world needs is more and more bursts of light from individuals and groups. It also brought out hope. And I've met many people that, that said to me, you know, they were, they were lost and they came there and they got hope again for their own lives. And yes. all of a sudden something changed inside of them. And um, this is really what I'm about, is helping uh, to get this burst of light out and to, and to bring hope into our world. Uh, you know, uh, I speak to people here all the time about peace peace activities and some people say oh there's no hope there'll never be peace and I just can't think this way because I know there will be because I have hope in myself that and, and trust in myself that things are working that things are working but maybe they're not working at a fast pace and maybe they won't come according to certain viewpoints but still um, there is the vibration of peace that's growing and uh, Anyway, Jerusalem Celebration of Light was an amazing festival that uh, continued. And when the Jerusalem Hug started, uh, uh, Jerusalem's Celebration of Light seemed to fade out. And I kind of let that happen. But still, the Jerusalem Celebration of Light could happen. Uh, but I would really like a, um, a group that wants to, uh, to take it on and to organize it, because I don't want everything on my shoulders as it used to be. Of course, 13 years, 12 years. That's a long time and a big work, a great work. Maybe we talk a little bit about the hug, Jeff. Um, I know you've also participated in all the hugs. And maybe we could talk about the connection. First of all, what is the Jerusalem hug? And, and how, how, in many, many ways, it's, the, um, it's so related to the Festival of Lights. Right. Well, the Jerusalem Festival of Light was uh, about 15, 20 minutes from the old city of Jerusalem. Right. Uh, the the hug itself, the Jerusalem hug, is around the old city of Jerusalem. That's right. And so it's much more in uh, suburbia before we were in nature. Yes. And um, <coughs> so the hug is an opportunity for people, spiritual people, to come together, mystical people to come together, to hold hands, to radiate light for love to be together and to bring some type of hope. Now, unfortunately, we haven't had enough people to surround the whole old city. Well, that would be a whole lot of people. That would be probably about 8,000 people we figured out. Once. Okay. And um, we've had, I think, up until like 1,000 people or something. And But it's hard to organize it because the old city is very large and there's many, and there's different uh, uh, religions that are... Indeed, that's the in idea. ...in this section. And also relating to the police, it's not the simplest thing in the world. But we've had very successful gatherings. Um, as I said, we didn't, we haven't had the numbers we would like. But the energy and the spirit and the quality has been very high at each gathering. And um, similar to Jerusalem Celebration of Light, people leave there and they feel hope, they feel strength, they feel like something is happening. Uh, sometimes in this area you can get very depressed by saying, oh, another fighting, more people killed, this and this happening. But when you have a, a hug or a Jerusalem celebration of light or many other 
peace gatherings that take place, all of a sudden you feel a burst and all of a sudden there's like, oh yeah, okay, we're still present. Life is still present. Spirit is still present. You bet. And uh, I have to say, um, as much as we can, we circle the old city and we send it love. And the idea is to bring all the different groups in the old city, the four quarters of the old city. It's divided into four quarters, the Jewish, the Muslim, the Christian, and the Armenian. And we send love. And the idea is harmony and unity and brotherhood and sisterhood for... Um, we radiate it to and in the old city, and and then once it's radiated to the old city, it just spreads all over the world, because it is, in many ways, the energetic heart of the world, and it's divided into four, just like the human heart, and um, it's powerful, and, and people come from all over the world, again, James Twyman, he made a whole movie connected to the Jerusalem Hug, called The Moses Code, and um, a beautiful movie. And a lot of people come from Holland and from Europe and um, not, as, not as many as we would like, but, and Jews and Arabs. It's, an, it's uh, an opportunity for Muslims and Jews and Christians to, uh, to do this great thing together and to unify. So in many ways I see it as the uh, spiritual child of the uh, Or Yerushalayim. And celebration. Yes, the, the Jerusalem celebration of life. And Jeff, you've done such a beautiful, uh, beautiful work for so many years here, and you've done it with grace and with an, with an ease, uh, relatively. Though some of it has been very hard work. And uh, so I personally thank you for the role you've played in my life, which has been a very big life, a uh, big, big role. And um, Jeff has really been was my first spiritual teacher here in Israel in many ways. Um, and I learned so much and I still learn from Jeff. So um, do you have any final words for our audience? Well, I also learned from you. And okay. I would like to say that uh, you're an inspiration to myself. You've been since I met you. And that uh, you continue to be for myself and many people. Um, the fact that you are shining your light but your body's not working as you would like it to be. Not yet. Not yet. Well, it's 30 years, it. I'm still working on it. And you're still working on it, and then I see that you're moving different parts yeah, of your body yeah. better and better. Some things are getting better, it's true. But you're carrying a very strong light, and that light goes beyond the body, it goes to all the world. And um, you have a beautiful reputation around uh, the city and around the country, Thank you. and um, it's really a pleasure to know you and to spend time with you. I just do stuff I like, our that's audience. it. <laughs> so, um, Jeff, do you have any final words for our, our for our audience today? Yes, that uh, peace is always present. Maybe that's enough, but not enough people are paying attention. So uh, maybe that's enough for now. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very, very much, and God bless. <laughs>